Hey everyone, welcome back to the virtual classroom. I'm Kimberly Ring and I'm here today to show you how to use Google Voice. I use Google Voice for mainly texting. If you're like me, you might have an issued phone to you from your company or school. So I use that for my calls. But there's been occasions where a student or parent didn't answer the school phone number and I've used Google Voice to call that particular family just to see if they might answer it that way. So, but I mainly use it for calls, I mean for text. So right now, many of you are currently uh, working from home because of this virus, but this is something that you can still use anytime, regardless of whether you're working at home or not. So let's dive right on in. Let's talk about Google Voice. So what I love about Google Voice is that it's free. It's a free personal option, so I kind of skipped that part or it won't let me go back for whatever reason. But when you go to Google Voice, you first and foremost need a Google account. Now this could be a fresh one with an at gmail.com, one you aren't using. Hopefully you already have a Google account, but um, if you don't have one, you can make a fresh one, a brand new one, or you can tie it to an email that you already have Whenever you go to sign up, it kind of gives you that option. So just be aware of that. So you can tie it to an email that you already have without giving you the Gmail aspects of it. Or you can just make a whole account with the email aspect of it. So it's entirely up to you. Regardless, you just need, you need an account. <laughs> so once you're logged in, it'll bring you to this page. From here, you're going to decide what kind of area code you want your your new phone number to have there aren't any in my in my area so i have a 580 area code and there's not any so i'm going to choose uh, the next closest area code one that would be familiar to my families so whenever i call or i text they're like oh you know this is someone in my area because they might not be inclined to answer a phone number from a completely different state i know if i get a phone number from like alaska or New York, I'm like, I don't know anyone there, so that would be calling me, and I let it go on the voicemail. But if it's a, a local number, I might be more inclined to answer. So just keep that in mind. Once you find a number you want, you'll just select it. Really doesn't matter. You just need one with your area code. And this is as far as I'm going to take you because I can't show much more. And you might be nervous at this point because it's asking you to verify with an existing phone number. The reason I can't show you anymore is because I have a Google number that's tied to my one cell phone number. But basically what it's doing is just making sure that you're not a bot and that you're just not, that you're not a bot making just a phone number to spam people. So by verifying and putting in your, like it'll send you a code. If you ever do like the two factor authorization, it'll always send you a code and you have to put that in. That's just what this is doing. It's just making sure you're a person and not a bot. And then also, if you ever get locked out, it'll have your, you can use your phone number as security. So anyway, once you get that all verified and authorized, it will then take you to a screen that looks like this. And it'll have your name. It'll have your Google phone number right here, which is handy. You can copy and paste that into an email if you want your parents and students to know uh, that, hey, you might be calling or texting from this number. They can put it in their phone. That's what I tell my parents to do. Uh, they have this number as my text number. And so that way they can text me if something comes up for whatever reason. You can call from this number as well. I don't use it very often, but I have, I'm familiar with it. Before you call, you're gonna wanna make sure your audio settings are correct. You'll This will move when you talk, so my microphone is working. And then you can make sure that your speakers are working as well. And then just, if you can't hear the test, then you know something's wrong and you need to troubleshoot through that. To send a text, uh, you'll go to this messaging button and click that and then click new messages. If you have messages, they'll be here. I hid mine so that way I wouldn't break any FERPA laws. So, but then you'll just type in your number here and then you can attach uh, a picture, you can attach uh, emojis, and you can type in your message. And I will normally write in something along the lines like, hey, 
they, uh, hey, Mrs. Rogers, that's my maiden name. Um, this is Mrs. Ring, your fourth grader's homeroom teacher at OVCA. Just reaching out to see if you need any support or have any questions. You can say whatever you want. I'm just typing out something that I might be writing to my families. Be aware of FERPA laws. Uh, we, you can't typically say their name until they say their name. But, you know, difficult times. But I'm not, I'm going to tell you what we do uh, in a virtual world. I would never say the kid's name until they say the, the kid's name. So that's why I've said fourth graders, homeroom teacher. Uh, that way they know who I'm talking about in case they have several kids in that family. And I'm also not breaking any for laws. So you can also set up a voice mail. So if you have calls that come in uh, and you don't answer, it'll go to a voicemail. Uh, you can find that here. Uh, if you have any voicemails, they'll be here. They'll also be transcribed, which is nice. So I'll show you how to set up that. So when you are in, you'll go to settings, which is that there was a gear up here, but now it's gone because I'm in it, but there'll be a gear up here and you'll just go to voicemail. From there, you can record your voicemail. So uh, you can do it right from your computer, which is really, really nice. And you can listen to it back here. Uh, you can have your voicemail sent to an email, which is what I do. I also have the messages sent to my to the email as well, just in case I don't have it open. I typically try to open this website as soon as I log in for the day, but sometimes I forget. So it'll send me a, an email and that will remind me, hey, I should have that open. If you're like me and you don't know how to set limits on your own, <laughs> you can set up a do not disturb. So when you're done for the day uh, and you don't want to be disturbed again, you can just slide that on over and it will turn uh, messaging, forwarding, and call and voice calls to uh, your voicemail. I don't, I will tell you, I don't have Google Voice on my phone. I just don't because I don't know how to set limits. So, um, so I don't ever use this because I just close the website, right? So it's just going to automatically go to the messaging. It's automatically going to go to the voicemail. So I don't worry about it. So just whenever I log in the next day, I'll check my email. It'll tell me if I got any voicemails that way. It'll tell me if I got any texts that way. So also if I just open the website, I'll see it. It'll give me a number. It'll say the text messages. It'll say a number of calls, all that fun stuff. So that's just me. Those are the settings that I use. Uh, you can play in here. The payment is, I don't really know. I've never had to worry about that. So. Uh, I'm assuming if you make long distance calls that, that costs so but I've never had to worry about that uh, web notifications voicemail all that fun stuff so there's lots of different settings you can set up for your Google Voice you just need to play around and see which ones you like but those are the ones that I really worry about so uh, messaging will be for and on um, and you can you can play with all that this one you might be wondering about, your phone number is already anonymous, right? This is a completely new number. <laughs> um, at the end of this year, whenever you're ready to uh, kind of say bye to your current class and you don't want them to contact anymore, you can go to account and actually delete this phone number or change it. It's whatever. Um, you can just start fresh. So you can delete that number, get a new one so your old families don't have that phone number and can't reach you via that way. That shouldn't be a big concern of yours, but I've had past families try to reach out to me about things with their current teacher that they shouldn't have been contacting me about. So this just kind of hinders that from happening from the get go. And that's Google Voice. So I hope that this really helps you both contact your families, whether it be call or text, while also keeping your privacy. And I Remember, sharing is caring. We During this time, we want to make sure that we're supporting all of us teachers, whether you're virtual or traditional and now being placed in a virtual world. We want to make sure that you are de-stressed as much as possible during this time. So share this. 
uh, comment below, tag a friend, whatever you need to do to get this word out. Because really, honestly, my goal is just to help as many teachers as I can possibly can. Not about me. It's definitely about you and making sure that you feel supported during this time. Also, let me know what other kind of videos you would want to learn about. Is there anything that you're struggling with? Anything you wish you knew more about, but you just don't have the time or the know-how to explore it? I'm happy to do that. This is what I want to do with my life, so I'm happy to research and look and learn things that you are curious about because I'm probably curious about it too, so just let me know. Comment those below and I will get on it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on the virtual classroom. Bye!